When we look into the eyes of a child, we are looking into the future because they are the ones who are going to shape and mold the world of tomorrow. It is our opportunity today to mold and shape them for a better future. While there are many organizations that try to do this, there are few that have as long and successful a track record as Child Impact International. In this episode, we will be looking at the history and mission of this Christ-centered organization. How much sacrifice Jesus made for us and how much God loves each one of you. It all started back in 1966 with a young woman named Maisie Folk. Maisie wanted to send clothing to needy children in Korea. So she and her husband Dennis registered Asian Aid Australia, which later expanded to the United States as Asian Aid USA and then became Child Impact International. Their efforts attracted the attention of a 26-year-old Helen Eager, who began volunteering. I think the first time I was involved with anything with Asian Aid, we went to Maisie Fook's house to um, pack some clothes that they were sending to South Korea, because Asian Aid actually started in South Korea. And um, I can remember I only owned one very nice cardigan, and I took it off because it was hot, and somehow my best cardigan must have gone to South Korea. <laughs> But, um, and then we actually sponsored a girl to do her nursing in, in South Korea. Shortly after, they saw the need that Vietnamese children had for education and expanded their work to help them. Unfortunately, they weren't able to operate there for long. War had been raging in Vietnam for around two decades, but the fall of Saigon in 1975 and the subsequent communist takeover of the country meant that it was no longer safe to work there. But this did not stop the mission of Asian Aid in other areas. When Maisie heard of the need in Bangladesh, she knew where they were going to expand. She really loved Bangladesh. And they had um, different things they were doing there as well as educating children. They had one place where they had the um, women making baskets, and this kind of thing. A major milestone for the still young Asian Aid also happened in Bangladesh. They saw that Manasapara school was going to close, so they stepped in to save it. Today, Manasapara is one of the largest Adventist schools in Bangladesh. Helen Eager was inspired to see the work that Asian Aid was doing, but felt that she could do more by starting her own organization. I was living in Kurunbong back in those days, and we actually wanted to start our own charity but they said um, New South Wales was not registering any charities at the moment, and so we requested to become a branch of, um, of Asian Aid. And so we became the Hunter Valley branch in Kurunbong. During this time, Helen did a lot to increase the work of Asian Aid, helping it to expand into India and other countries. I think it wasn't until 1979 that I started going to India. But from about then, I went every year to India and then a little bit later to Bangladesh and Nepal also every year um, from 1979 onwards. All these trips helped Helen to know the needs that each area had. After 23 years of leadership, Maisie Folk retired from Asian Aid in 1989. Helen stepped in as CEO and led the organization's continued expansion into more countries and more ways to help children and the medical needs of the poor. Helen oversaw the establishment of orphanages, schools, and developed a bond with many of the sponsored children that helped to shape their lives. My eager mommy's life, I thought of doing service because she has sacrificed a lot for us, a child like us. So uh, I thought uh, this uh, field, the uh, medical field, has uh, got a lot of opportunities to serve in the rural areas. My early memories of her, she used to give candies, and every time she used to uh, greet us, she used to give us a hug, a kiss, she used to tell us a lot of stories. I and mean, she had so many, so much to tell us every time she came. Her kind and loving influence can be seen in the smiling faces of many generations of children who have had the privilege of being around her. In 2002, after many years of renting, a school was constructed for the deaf in Kaligal, India. This school provides food, boarding, and an education. 
It is also a beacon of hope to many deaf children since it is located in a poor rural area where it's hard to get an education, which is especially true for the deaf. Many of the children who have graduated from this school have gone on to have successful careers. The next year saw continued growth with the blind school opening in Bubbly, India. This school is home to over 100 children who are able to realize their dreams. Some work in government, while others have become teachers in many other careers. After 16 years as CEO, Helen Eager stepped down from that role, but continued to work with Asian Aid Australia. Inspired by the work that Asian Aid Australia was doing, a group in America decided to form Asian Aid USA. After several years of operation, Jim Rennie became the CEO of Asian Aid USA. The organization expanded the amount of schools and orphanages that it either partnered with or directly operated. Asian Aid USA later changed its name to Child Impact International. In 2016, Jim led the way in addressing a need that he had seen in his travels around India. Over the years as I visited India, Bangladesh and Myanmar, I became very aware of the number of children being trafficked. We've even had children disappear from our schools. They've gone home for the holidays and simply disappeared from the village. They've been trafficked. And the problem is huge. And I just felt the burden that we had to do something. We had to play a small part in helping rescue children from the various aspects of trafficking. Jim decided that the best way to address the problem would be to form a partnership with a non-government organization in Bangalore. Operation Child Rescue was formed as a project of child impact to assist children that are abandoned or trafficked beginning in India. Child Impact was excited that it could help in some small way in giving rescued children hope. With a desire to reach more needy children, Asian Aid USA decided to change their name to Child Impact International. This name reflects far more clearly the critical work that we are doing with very needy students, their families and mission schools. Child Impact International gives momentum and direction to a bold growth strategy that will impact the lives of thousands of additional children. This name avoids any confusion in regards to where we work and what people consider Asia. This name gives a clear distinction between this organisation and Asian Aid Australia, which are completely separate. Since then, Child Impact International has lived up to its new name by expanding into Zambia. We had always had a strong request for Africa. There are many people who have a burden and a heart for Africa, and so we looked at it and we were very excited to find Riverside Farms that we could partner with. Uh, Riverside Farms give us good management, they operate a good school, so that we can be confident that our sponsorship on the ground is very effective. Riverside Farms has and continues to grow by adding more buildings to meet the great need that Zambia has for education. The expansions include secondary education that will enable up to 150 sponsored students to continue their education. In 2017, Helen Eager fully retired, but the impact that she has had on thousands of lives continues. Helen Eager is an amazing woman. And just two weeks before filming with this, I was able to meet her in Australia. She's getting on in life, but she still has a passion for the children. The work that she did to establish Asian Aid and what then in America became Child Impact is just an amazing story. She's really a Mother Teresa in action. Um, She's now uh, retired in the city of Brisbane in Australia. Helen's had a real tough time lately. Her husband passed away and she lost all of her house and belongings in the Australian bushfires. But she's still committed to the children. Even the day that I pe uh, picked her up, she'd just been down to the shop to buy some more wool and she was knitting jerseys for the kids in Nepal. I just ask for your prayers for Helen, and we certainly stay in touch with her, and we certainly keep her up to date on the amazing work that she established in so many countries. Please pray for Helen. 
In spite of all of the challenges Helen has faced, her main focus continues to be the children. I am just more grateful than I can express that Child Impact is growing and doing so much to help as many young people as possible and children, small ones as well as bigger ones. And Jim Rennie has been telling me some of the opportunities and some of the um, extra things that you're all doing and I think it's just wonderful and I'm very, very, very grateful. Sponsoring a child and giving them an opportunity to get an education and to do something special or useful with their lives, it's just, it has just changed the lives of thousands and thousands of children that I have actually seen myself with the um, and many of them still contact me. And I think from memory in Bangladesh, they said once that about half of the workers in the, in the church in Bangladesh had been sponsored children that had grown up and were now working, in, working for God. And I just, I just think that it's an amazing ministry and we just want to thank everyone who's been involved. It's just, Words foul me. <laughs> From its humble beginnings with Maisie Folk wanting to send clothing to needy children in Asia, to now operating in seven countries around the world, the dedication of these faithful workers can be seen in the thousands of changed lives. Lives that would otherwise have had no hope. Sponsors like you have made it possible for Asian Aid to grow over the last 55 years and to expand. This is why Asian Aid USA changed its name to Child Impact International. Thank you. Your sponsorship has made all of this possible. Sponsoring children in activities like these mission schools and opportunities is a tremendous way to help form the character of young people as they look to the future. They will never forget their association in a Christian environment. And by God's grace, many of them will become members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is absolutely a powerful witness to sponsor a child in Child Impact and so many other uh, organizations that help young people to find Jesus. Sponsoring a child not only has short-term effects, but it has a long-term effect. Sponsoring a child is investing in the character of a young person for eternity. We're taping this right here in Myanmar at the Myanmar Union Adventist Seminary. And about one-third of the students, or one-quarter of the students, are being sponsored by Child Impact. People who become workers in God's uh, church, people who make an impact in the community, have been people who have been sponsored. Your sponsorship is absolutely an investment in the future of the church. Hi there. Before you go, I'd like to invite you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'd also like to encourage you to watch some of our other videos highlighting Child Impact's work for at-risk and marginalized children.